I've got a question for you, and I've got a question for the Bad Weather fans audience. The Bad Weather fans fans? The Bad Weather fan fan fans. Who yeah. gets, I don't want to say fired first, because there could be some weird kind of like a mutual parting bullshit. Who lasts longer in New York as a coach? Steve Nash or Tom Thibodeau? We have Rob Sala to that list too. <laughs> no, we cannot. This is strictly hoops. Who is who out gets fired first? first? Yeah, because we know the Nash angle. I mean that that goes without saying. Oh, well, I'll re- the Nash angle is they all hate each other. The Nets start off slow. Blah blah blah. They got to make a change to get a spark or something. Something happens with the Nets that ignites it. The Thibodeau angle is slow start stubborn with his rotations evan fournier like he finds a way to get evan fournier 50 minutes even though there's only 48 minutes in a game like somehow obi toppin gets negative seven minutes in his first start right <laughs> like what happens first well i think it's a tough question it is a tough question because there's a lot of variables there we'll start exactly. with the nets yeah start with the nets the nets can't I mean, the Nets have been known to flip flop here. So let's with the vaccine stuff with, uh, you know, other things with Atkinson and, you know, whatever. So let's let's go there for a second. But the Nets can't look themselves in the mirror, put their foot (laughs) foot to the fire about with Kyrie and, and risk it all with Kyrie and Durant showing up and say, no, we're not firing Nash. And then three months in the season, you start off like 500 and you'd be like, all right, goodbye. You can't do that. Yeah, they could. (laughs) They could, but then you look like then any smidge of credibility you gain back for standing up to Kyrie is totally fucking gone. And now Kyrie and Durant are going to do whatever they want again. Anything can change with this organization. I hear your points and they're fair, but, you know, anything's possible. Anything's possible for sure. Really? Like anything like Kyrie could be the player coach by January. He really can be. He (laughs) could. And and then he'll miss that. He'll be absent as a player and a coach. (laughs) And then with the Knicks, it's like, it's so hard for me to see Tibbs get fired. Because, yeah, one good year, one bad year. But the bad year was, like, completely, almost completely on Tibbs' shoulders for not holding Randall accountable, not fixing the rotation and playing the players that were playing better, and being so stubborn that it costs you games. Coming out every third quarter, it felt like, with a shitty game. You might be up. Look at the Nets game when Cam Thomas game. You're up 30 points at halftime, whatever it was, 100 points at halftime. There was not one Nick fan that you met on Twitter or texted or anybody that said, oh, we got this one. Because we knew they were going to come out in the third quarter. I even bet on the Nets in the second half to cover because I knew the Nets were going to come back. I didn't know they were going to win, but I knew they were going to make it a game. Hurry out a good game. Because if if you looked up... If somebody can do this to me, because I've tried, if somebody can get on Stat Muse or somewhere and give me the Knicks third quarter record, just head to head third quarter, how many third quarters they won, I guarantee you they'd be 30 games under 500 right. at so least. It was, so it was putrid third. And that's on the coach. You're coming out of halftime that flat, that's on the coach. And if it's that often. And then with the Randall stuff, you're not holding him accountable. And then you're, you're forcing us, forcing Fournier down our throats. You got Kemba. It, 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 you're, you're bench him too soon. And then you bench him too late. And then just there's so many things throughout the For season sure. that screwed things up. And, you know, Obi Toppin sneezes on the court and he's benched. It's just like, what are we doing here? That, And he's still here. I want your answer and on this. I'm excited. I really don't think Tibbs is going to get fired unless the bottom completely falls out of this team. So I really do think that it's going to be Steve Nash first because of the uncertainty in Brooklyn and the unpredictability. But, but, but I will say, I have to, you know, I will say you didn't just come out here and be like, oh, the Nets were a joke and he's going to get fired. You definitely gave like a fair answer there. And it wasn't you. just, you know, your well bias. Thought out. Of, yeah, it was well <laughs> thought out and it was organized and it was, it, it was, it was great. Uh, I think, unfortunately, they both last for a couple more years. I think the <sighs> Nets will. Yeah, because I said, I, I, well, I think the Nets will be good enough and I don't think we'll be dysfunctional enough or he'll get fired. I don't know what the ceiling is. Tibbs will be 70 years old. <laughs> like, well, we won 30 games last year. You got to give him for, a chance. For, He's 70 years old. You president. never know. <laughs> I, um, you know, I, I, I said this on the, I said this on the previous podcast, the Knicks are in purgatory and he's the perfect man for the job. 
Mm -hmm. He's going to play. He's going to find that right balance of not playing the young players. And he's going to find a balance of playing the older players to be just good enough. So in 40, 42 games, 38 to 42 games. Yeah. With the skinny James uh, Harden, who's lost 100 pounds, fuck. according to James Harden. And then now that the Celtics, who seem to be a mess, which is a crazy situation, not even worth talking about at this point. It's so Things it's changed a couple of so days fast. Yeah. It's Robert just, Williams out too. You know, look yeah. at Chris Middleton hurt to start the season. Yeah. Now, and look at the Cavs, so... man. Look at the Cavs sitting pretty. Cavs are sitting pretty, man. And the Nets are sitting that. pretty. Yeah, the Nets are sitting pretty. That's sitting pretty. I can't there's... believe there's basketball starting in a couple of days. Holy fuck, man. That's it's just insane. It's gonna be fun to watch. You know what's crazy? When do the Nets Cause... play again? We go uh, ahead. Sure. I'll look that up. But you know what's crazy? It's like I'm I'm nuts because I'm looking up, okay, opening day. For the Knicks, they're playing the Grizzlies on the 19th. I look up the NLCS schedule, and it's going to yeah, be game two that. of the NLCS. And I'm like, "Fuck, yeah, the Mets!" Good... And uh, uh, you know, I, you got to watch the Mets, of course. But then it's like it's opening night for the Knicks. You know what I mean? Like, so it's just like, what do I do? But like, let's let it play out. Maybe I the Mets that. sweep the series in don't the first do round. That. Don't <laughs> do that. I don't want to go don't there because then I'm like, count it. I'm touching the money, and then I'm just like, fuck. But in my head, I'm like, I can't not think about that. But then I'm like, ah, if I'm out at a bar, they'll both be on and I'll be able to watch both. You know what I mean? But yeah, at the same time, it's don't do that. Fuck. Anyway. Yeah. Because yes. who knows with that? the Mets? Don't don't put them already in game two of the I NLCS <laughs> and all these different scenarios. Net Nick first game of the year is November 9th. It's a Wednesday at MSG South. The Barclays Two days Center. after my birthday. Maybe we Good should do know. that. Huh? You want to what to go get? For your birthday, are you asking me now to buy you tickets? Is that what's happening? No, here? I'm just thinking like it's two days after my birthday. So maybe I am not going like to the Barclays Center for a net Nick game with you. <laughs> Hell no. Well, I gotta see how the Knicks are playing first. I'm not going if no, they're like I'm not going nine. there. I'm like, I'm not going. No, because I, I I can't. Do that. I <laughs> Sorry, can't do call me a front runner if you want. I'm not going to Brooklyn to watch the Knicks who are imploding in in, in at the no. Barclays Center. No, first of all, no, they're like you. ten games into the season, and I don't need to go there. And then like the Knicks go up 17 11, and you're obnoxious and loud. That's the last thing I need to deal with. Hell no. No, Definitely no. Not. we needed we needed a, a playoff series play, against each other the, two years ago is what we needed. We needed that two oh. years ago. That would have been great. That would have been great for the podcast. And it would have been great to to just that would have been nuts for the city. Like we needed that as a, as a New York basketball city. I know. We, but we didn't fought. get it. We would have. <laughs> I, I don't know if I could have sat there next to you and like seen each play and heard you're like that was a foul and under my breath like this guy's a this guy's a moron oh yeah you know, i don't no, know i'm relentless at a game man relentless okay. yeah i'm, I'm one sure of those guys you, yelling sure you the are. entire game relentless and it's just <laughs> i've just yeah man I, that that yeah, that when i went to game two and the obi top and alley oop i jumped on top of my friends and we, we like fucking like all like mosh pit <laughs> it's yeah, like it's one of those Rush, like yeah yeah that Mount was insane. more nick moments for you yeah recently yeah sure you know all but, time. Uh, yeah, um, sure. I'll go to the garden with you for a game, but I can't do it at Barclays. Yeah, you want to go to a real arena. I understand. No, you know? it's not. In Mecca, you want to go to the to New York City, actual well, New York City. I understand. You know, I mean, you know, as Papa left said on the podcast, it's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just different. And I, but in all seriousness, I just don't want to. Um, I could stomach a loss at the garden easier. Like right. I could, you know, you're they're on the road. You're the away uh, team anyway, right? Yeah. So it's like it's a little easier to stomach than if I was, you know, and then the Knicks fans start cheering, which would happen. I've said this before, like the Jets don't get Jet games become half the arena of other teams. Jets don't no get one, any fans anymore. But Nobody's no one even seems there. to even uh <laughs> but no one even seems to give that a problem. But the Nets do it. It's like it's a big deal.